So it started a few months ago. I got a text on WhatsApp from a number I didn't know. It was an unknown number. She was asking for a guy called Daniel if he was free tomorrow. So I just responded saying, oh, I'm not Daniel. This is David. He lost about a thousand five hundred pounds in a crypto scam. This individual came through a message and uh, presented herself in this case as someone that works on real estate and needed some of my marketing services. And this is Jose. Scammers stole about twenty thousand dollars from him. Replying to a stranger who contacts you online can be the first step toward losing all your life savings. I'm talking about big butchering scams among the most dangerous frauds involving cryptocurrency. Since 2022 to 2024, about $75 billion have been stolen globally through these types of scams, and numbers are on the rise. In this video, we'll explain how these scams work through their victims' real stories, why they are so dangerous, and what are the red flags that you need to look for in order not to fall for them, or what you can do in case you already did. This video is brought to you by Crystal, the leading blockchain analytic platforms trusted by businesses and government agencies worldwide. With their expertise in crypto investigations, Crystal provides unparalleled insights into blockchain transactions, helping to shine a light on suspicious activities. If you want to learn how to protect yourself from online scams or trace digital assets, explore Crystal's resources and expert guidance at crystalintelligence.com. Discover how their deep knowledge of crypto scams can empower you to stay ahead of potential threats. The pig gets gets fattened, right? Like as, it, as you know, if you're raising like an animal, it's not just a one-time scam. It's not just a, I'm going to get you for ten thousand now. It's I'm going to get you for ten thousand and fifty and a hundred and two hundred and so on and so on and so on. In a pig butchering scam, scammers build trust with the victim over time. Then they persuade the victim to invest in fake opportunities often involving cryptocurrency, and disappear with the money. In the past, scammers attracted victims with widely advertised Ponzi schemes. You probably remember OneCoin or BitConnect. Today, they target individuals directly through social media and messaging apps. I get a lot of messages like that in, on LinkedIn uh, inquiring about my services. So this person inquired about my marketing services like anybody else. She then replied almost immediately going, oh, so sorry, looking for this guy. He's a car mechanic, he's got car problems. I offered my advice to see if I could at least suggest what might be wrong, you know. She was quite grateful for that. She was asking about the day, just leading into more conversation. Once the first contact is made, the scammer begins earning the victim's trust. That often involves establishing a romantic relationship. I had deeper conversations with her than I had with previous girlfriends. And she said that she, she loved me as well. We had phone calls, quite a lot of phone calls, we had video calls. But the romance hook is just one example. Often scammers research their victims and connect with them by using shared personal or professional interests. She started to talk about a little bit of the marketing aspect of why we were having these conversations, but also she was bringing in and out the fact that she's doing very well with these investments. And that piqued my interest because I have done forex trading in the past. At a certain point during the conversation, the scammer casually mentions an opportunity. And then it was about probably about a month down the line where she just started dropping pictures of crypto. A couple she dropped in were two, three thousand pound profit in about a minute or two of trading options. So I started to express some interest in it, mainly because the numbers I was seeing were bigger numbers than I make a year. Now, you might be wondering, how can someone end up discussing investments with complete strangers? The answer is that scammers use psychological techniques to gain the victim's trust, often by offering something the person wants. She was good, she's a good looking girl. That was obviously a huge part to play, really. And at the time, I was a bit lonely, I guess, is another reason why I responded. Some portion of people who get those messages, they want to believe that they got a job. They want to believe that there's somebody who's romantically interested in them. Whatever it is, right, they will use that against you. And they will use that as a way to trick you and to try to say, well, oh, I can offer you the thing that you want. 
Once they've gained the victim trust, the scammer introduces them to a trading platform, a crypto website, or an app. She did end up sending me a website link. I've never heard of this website before. I quickly Googled it. Well, the red flag, I suppose, was that I couldn't find any information about it. But in the same breath, I couldn't find any negative information about it. Uh, she has explained to me that it was a private platform. It was not really public. I didn't know what crypto platforms look in general. So to me, it looks like a trading platform, but it was very different from the Forex type of uh, broker platform that I'm familiar with. These platforms closely resemble legitimate trading sites or even mimic real ones. Scammers often target victims who are unfamiliar with crypto and how these platforms work. I dropped a thousand pounds in. The returns were 10 to 15% at a minimum, really. Sometimes it was up to 20% returns in a couple of minutes. So a lot faster, a lot nicer to see numbers go up that quickly compared to your standard stocks and shares trading. I was looking at the $20,000 going into 21, 22, $25,000. So the account with the real money was quote unquote growing with these trades. In reality, these platforms don't trade real money. They just display random numbers to encourage victims to invest more. If victims start having doubts, the scammer will apply pressure to get even more money from them. I just wasn't willing to put such big numbers in until I knew the person in real life. You know, she started throwing things out that I'm not looking at the bigger picture, but how can she be with someone who's not willing to take a risk like this? And then she would start accusing me that I don't trust her, mainly to not risk losing her. I put in another 500 pounds. And it was probably 10 to 15 trades that we were doing together. Then one day she just disappeared. She just stopped replying. She was no longer on WhatsApp. So I tried to withdraw. They told me it was processing and to check back in 24 hours. So I did. And they told me that it, it failed because I needed to put in an extra 35%. They were pressuring me. You had 25. If we see this balance going to 50, at that point, we will release your funds. Obviously, it was a scam at that point. I knew it wasn't going to come out. Overall, both Jose and David were sort of lucky. They lost a relatively small amount of money. The average loss for American victims was about $210,000 according to 2022 statistics. 77% of the victims emptied their bank accounts and 43% took out loans from friends and family. Now, recovering funds lost in a pig butchering scam is extremely difficult. Cryptocurrencies are pseudonymous, which makes it hard to trace them to specific criminals. Transactions are irreversible, meaning that you can't just undo them. Some specialized firms assist law enforcement in tracking funds on the blockchain, which can sometimes lead to recovering the stolen money. If you feel you've been the victim of a scam, um, report it to local police, your local fraud reporting agency, cease all communications with the scammer immediately, and look to protect the funds that you do have that are still in your control. Another problem is that crypto is transnational and are unregulated in many jurisdictions. That makes the recovery of the funds complicated for law enforcement agencies. If the crypto is in a Chinese uh, or a, a you know, non-US crypto exchange or in a cold wallet or something else where a US court order doesn't mean anything, then sorry, you're out of luck. But big butchering scams cause more than just financial damage they also leave a devastating psychological impact on the victims. Yeah, I lost a bit of money, but that wasn't the main loss. The main loss was was her. Like, I was kind of truly heartbroken that this relationship had happened and for it to all be a lie, essentially. I know I've been scammed, but I just can't get rid of this 1% that she might have had feelings for me going the other way. So, to protect your emotional well-being and your finances, here are the main red flags you need to look out for. Watch out for, for random text messages or approaches on so, social media sites, Instagram, Facebook, or even LinkedIn, where people you don't know suddenly want to get to sort of know you. It's really, really important for, for people to always try to verify the, the identity of the people that they are 
they are communicating with. Having messages out of the blue, feeling the time pressure, you have to do it now or like something bad's going to happen. I think those are all red flags that people should be aware of. Do your research, whether that's around a particular opportunity or whether that's a particular application that you're looking to connect your cryptocurrency wallet to. If an investment, for example, is too good to be true, it, it probably is whether that's in the fiat world or whether that's in the crypto world. You may be wondering what's going on now with our victims. Well, both Daniel and Jose have mostly come to terms with their loss. Instead of focusing on their misfortune, they've used it as a lesson to help others avoid similar scams. They share their experiences on Reddit, which is how we found their story. When I hear the, you know, the 200,000, the 300,000, the close to a million dollar losses, that, that, hits, that hits home. And so that's what I'm trying to prevent. I kind of got destroyed in the comments for falling for this type of scam, which is, is fair enough. But the amount of guys that were falling for it, me private messaging me, made it all worth it because, you know, I was saving them dropping much more higher numbers than I ever dropped. Stay vigilant, everyone. Learn from Jose and Daniel's stories to avoid becoming yet another victim. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. It helps us reach more people and potentially save them from big butchering scams. I'm Giovanni, see you next time.